All right, I clapped into the mic. All right, <laughs> fucking yo, what up, man? We got Danny Diablo in the what's house. Up, what's up? What's up? Yo, what's thank up, you so much for coming. These niggas are mad young, bro. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're bugging out right now. These like, you guys are kids. Well, I'm younger than I look. I'm 24. But still, but man, I know, you, yeah, 23, man. <laughs> 20. <laughs> See, that's what we're saying. Like, we got the whole squad 24 here. 24 years old. I don't know how. I was already, uh, thank God for music, you know what I'm saying? But I was young, I started doing music, and I was like, but there's kids that are really into music, and like, we're 15 years yeah. old, already in bands. You mm-hmm. mean, so, like, Madball, Freddie was like, yeah. in bands. All right, yo, so I was going to start it off by asking, what came first, hardcore or graffiti? Oh, uh, graffiti. Graffiti came yeah. first? Yeah. When did you start writing? Like really, right? Like a real tag. Well, your first you, your first tag was like it was a what A M P or something? A P R so yeah, American APR? Puerto Rican retarded. <laughs> How wide is that, right? But that was like 85, 85, Started writing graffiti, and uh, I got into graffiti because my father was a cop, and my and my mother was a housewife. You mean so? Um, I had to go. To, I went to my orthodontist when I was like a little kid. My father was like, "Take your brother to the orthodontist." And we were like. 12 and 11, you mean? You know, and he's like, and back then the double R was on, you know, yeah. on Roosevelt, so we would take it to here to uh, Roosevelt to Lexington, the Citibank building, and we walked. But the thing was, I had to take my brother at like 10, 11 years old. So, okay. I, so we would just sit there and we would watch all the trains go by, like Angel Duster, Fuzz One, and that's how I got into, that's how basically. Like that's the start of my, my be, me being a criminal. You know what I mean? So because everyone's like, it's like weed. And when people go, oh, don't smoke weed, you'd yeah, yeah. be fucking sucking dick for crack or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, and you're like, what? what are you talking about, bro? And all of a sudden, you see some guy fucking old, like he used to smoke weed, now he sucks dick for crack. You know what I'm saying? But but it's the same thing. Gra- graffiti. Graffiti's an open gate. An open gate for crime. That's all it is, guys. I'm gonna, we can laugh about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But once you get that high for sure. of graffiti. Yeah, you're like fuck. I need something else. Oh, yeah. That's when you know. That's when the crazy shit starts. You're originally from Jackson, uh, Jackson Heights, yeah. Queens, right? Yeah. That's where you started writing. Yeah, Jackson Heights. Yeah. And the, you first noticed that you said on the trains, but you never hit the trains. I hit trains before. Oh, you did. Yeah. I, I the last time I ever hit a train was I, I moved from Jackson Heights to Woodhaven in '87. In '87, '89, the seventh train, the J trains were still running. Okay. And I, I, I remember one time I bumped into Nats, Gavin from you know, Burn, mm-hmm. and we had Absolution, and I, we hit the E train on the layup. Yeah. Okay. We hit it together. You hit the E train layup. Yeah, that was, that was like '88. I remember that. That was, that was crazy. Yeah. Well, yes, but stuff like that was always, you know, like my shit was just the streets. I mean, and that's what that's my thing was like. We're, we, we, I would be always out. At the clubs and shit like that, like like hip hop shit, and um, and then me and MQ were partners in graffiti. So when that nigga would dis- disappear, so of course I'm gonna be at a club and some nigga be your boy, yo, what's up, your boy? And that, then I got to punch someone in the face so yeah. it, because I was like, I can't I have to say, yo, if your boy's a bit, you sucker. I'm, you know, mm-hmm. I would fight for him all the time because yeah, like, yeah. because I was there, so uh-huh. I became like the poster boy for DMS. You mean like 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 so? Okay, and I know that like you guys went to the same high school, right? MQ? Yeah, you and MQ went to the same high school? No, no, no. Okay. I went to Bryant. Okay, but I thought... MQ, MQ went to Art and Design and okay. dropped out. But oh, Bryant High School. That's where the Bronx Hill was uh, filmed, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, Colosio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, like, heard some, <laughs> I heard some like story about someone asking you like what you write and you being like what you write and then it was yes, MQ. MQ. MQ on the 7th train. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. It looked like Morrissey. I was like, this Morrissey's <laughs> trying to talk shit to me. I was like, yo. He was, he was, it, I was in the... I was taking pictures... Of our throw ups, I did of, of this, a, this has to be 87. Yeah, so, doing, I was doing fill ins, first fill ins on 69th Fish, 46th Street and Bliss. I was hitting it was seven train, you know, and I was doing skinny caps, it was it was yeah. whack, you know, yeah. but still, I was, I was getting it done. Me and my boy JM, he's from, uh, from Jack Heights, also. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, he's a, he, he changed his whole life, so what I'm saying, but JM was dope, so shout out to Demetrius, but uh. He's like, yo, what you write? We we're like, man, what you write? And we're talking shit to each other. And then, the, then the, I was like, Isaac. He was like, MQ. And the shit closed. Then I was like, all right, then, then, then I'm, in, I'm in Jackson Heights, and I see him in Hoya. I'm like, oh shit, these are the niggas I saw last time. And we're like, oh, then, then we became boys. And Hoya was writing too at the time. Hey, I've seen some Hoya stickers. Hoya can write, but he, you know, he's like, he's, he's like more of a fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, it wasn't for me. Hoya would never play bass. Remember, that. I told him how to play bass. Yeah. <laughs> no, <I only> told <laughs> <you>. <laughs> 
Yeah, but you know, he used my sister's bass in the demise the demo. Okay. Yeah, so. Yo, who put you on mostly to graph? You think, like, taught you the roots, like, put you, like taught you how to move around like that? A graph? Yeah, in terms of graph. Uh, I got the kids in my neighborhood who were uh, Craze, Riz, uh, C-R-A-Z, Craze B. This guy mm-hmm. is a Turkish Guido guy, right? But this okay. dude was Kilshin in Jackson Heights and Woodside. So Craze, Lewd, High, Maze. Maze is a... Jackie, I'm gonna say his name, but they're old, old, these guys are old, like metalheads, but they were like metalheads, but they were like one Turkish guy, Chinese guy, he used to write CC, Crazy Chink, Jack, yo, <laughs> yo, Maze, Jackie, yo, this nigga was, oh, ask anyone, yo, watch him, be like, yo, I know who, uh, CC, Jackie, <laughs> his, 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 name, his name is uh, um, uh, Maze, Ma- it's May, Lu- uh, Maze, Lude, Hi, Dan- Danny OZ156, my brother, he was passed away. God bless you. But OZ was also with them. Chad Liss, uh, Chad from Jackson Heights. This guy was a white boy. He was ill, bro. Ask anyone. Uh, uh, An Angel Duster. Dominican nigga. Uh, shout out to his, uh, the, Rebecca, his sister. The, he, he was king of, of Corona in Jackson Heights, uh, Angel Duster. And we used to, those are guys I used to watch. You know what I mean? And then, uh, and, and, then I started going to city shows, and I was like, oh, shit, going to the show, we could kill shit and come back. And that's when we got yeah. in trouble, you know what I mean? That's when we got in a lot of trouble. Okay, so, but it was, so it was graph before hardcore, and it was, yeah. also, it was also hip-hop before hardcore, right? Yeah, you know why? Because I, I, I was so immersed. In, this is how it really went down. My mother's from uh, East River Houses Projects, uh, uh, Case Ladies Projects. Okay. So every, every summer, my mom threw me out of the house, go to my brother's house. Because, you know, they, they, my father wanted to hang out with my mom to get, to get the kids out. So, so I used to go to Spanish Harlem and, uh, and my, my mother's projects over there outside the window. That's what uh, K Slay used to DJ. Dez used to DJ. He's like graffiti Dez. So K Slay is a big yeah, graffiti right yeah, 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 yeah. So I used to watch him DJ and the piece and all that. That's how even more. So, every, the, so them sending me to the dent orthodontist <laughs> and to my grandma's house, yeah. I got, that's just where I got to become a criminal. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's fucked up, right? You, you, can't, you, you never know. You mean? Yeah. So that's how it happened, man. So I think about it, it's fucked up. You mean? Yeah. Because I, they sent me to, to, just to hang out. They sent me away to just get me out of the fucking house. Yeah, That's yeah, what they yeah. wanted. So. Little did they know. Little did <laughs> they know. Fucking, you know, taught me everything, right? Yeah. yeah. So then how'd that get you into the rap, hip-hop? The, the, the hip-hop thing was so crazy because the hip, I always was into hip-hop. We always loved hip-hop. But, you know, I mean, like, it was just, just the graffiti thing was more, I guess, my beast, when, when the Crush Group came out on B Street, we were in, yeah. out into graffiti and, like, oh, so 85 was a big year. But to me, the best... Years of music and graffiti stuff was like 85, 86, 87, 88, 89. Okay. It's to the, the Killing Time album. That was it. Okay. And that's the rest of Then it sucks because there's so many other good bands after that. But still, I'm like an old fuck. And I, I, I love the Killing Time album. The first one. That, but 89 was like, I graduated high school in 89. Think about that. That's, that's crazy. Right? Mm-hmm. And I still love, there's still good bands. Like Terror's a great band, but they're still 20 years old now, right? Yeah, to me, yeah. it's a new band. Yeah. That's fucked up. That's crazy. You know? Yeah. So. So then, how's that transition into getting into hardcore? I got into, it's weird, I got into hardcore later because I got into more, my uncle, oh, fuck, got right, Uncle Taffy, uncle, he was like, fucked up, you know, he had, had one eye, he was crazy, he was like, but he, uh, he was into rock, classic rock, okay. big Puerto Rican niggas, so he was like, and he was all fucked up and heroin and shit, but he used to, when I stuck him, I was stuck with this nigga for three months of, in the summertime, he'd be like, yeah, no one's acting, you're playing classic, it's all fucking high and shit, I'm just sitting there like, fuck, <laughs> this is what I was doing, he's like, he was like, he would bring me out, I'd like, walk around the store, we'd see the graffiti, people doing pieces, yeah. but he got me into fucking metal, I mean, like, I got into a Black Sabbath, mm. Sticks, Led Zeppelin, every fucking, White trash fucking guys you do you know, like that that, that, I, that to me it was like what the fuck is you know it's cool but it'd be like those dudes and plus back then it was way different now because like back then you couldn't leave your neighborhood bro I'm, I'm trying mm-hmm. to tell you something yeah, you know, over yeah. here there's 22 parks over here right yeah mm-hmm. so so it'd be like dead, dead running those kids over all from here but uh to be, the, the white boys were crazy because they were like into metal and they didn't give a fuck you know what I mean so and I'm. I'm mixed, so so imagine being your mom's black, you know, poor you, but they're black. Like, yo, nigga, your mom's a nigga. Then, then I had to walk to the synagogue on a fucking Friday with my family, high holiday, had a yarmulke on the afro, and a black lady. <laughs> they're, they're like, nigga, Jews, nigga. It was fucked up. So that's yeah, why yeah. I used to fight people all the time. Yeah. You know, it, people was like, that's horrible. No, that's part of life. You know, people are just ignorant because their fathers were like that. But, you know, 
Yeah, and no matter what, it could be it'd be like you guys have pink sneakers and be like, fuck your pink sneakers. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is something different. Kids are fucked up, you know? So Yeah, yeah. But it was always some crazy shit. But the metal shit, I, the, my neighbor, Teddy Rhodes got me to metal. My, my, my neighbor, he was an Ecuadorian kid. Love, he thought he was Ozzy. He thought he was Conan when Conan came out. He made a sword and shit like that. It was metal head shit. You know? So I was like, got into that shit. Then, but it got into metal, then thrash, then hardcore. Okay. But hardcore is my, they're so graffiti, all that shit. But out of all that shit, New York hardcore is my, my scene. My, the one I found love with and that yeah. I, I felt comfortable with. Okay. You, know, like, you remember your first show? Yes, it was a, a fucking um, absolution. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, it was absolute. I went with uh, Sasha Jenkins, Chaka from Burn, Free Five, Graffiti Rider, and Hush Sports Crew. Yeah, what year was that? 87. 87. Yeah. yeah. And you seen people pitting and all that? It was fucked up. I was scared. Yeah, I was a little kid. I was scared. You know, like, something happened the other day. I forgot the guy's name. I don't want to say the story, but I, I just saw the guy in Jersey. He, he was supposed to play a show with Murphy's Law like a few years ago, like four years ago. And I went in there and I, when I saw this guy's name, Sid, uh, he sang for this band. I forgot the name of the band from, from Jersey, but, open, but this dude looked crazy. Like his, half his head was smashed in. So I remember seeing this guy. The first thing I saw, a little kid, like 15 years old, is this fucking weird skin. That guy's head smashed in. Like, and he came into, I was hanging out and like four years ago, and I went to go see the show, and all of a sudden he came in. From work, he's all dressed up. And I was like, and I felt like a little kid. I almost felt like I was going to cry. I mean, I saw this guy's face. I said, dude, this nigga is ugly now, too. I was like, this thing, it looks exactly like when I saw him. I was like, oh, shit, this nigga still looks the same. He was from the, he was from the New York hardcore scene? He was from scene. New York hardcore scene. But he, okay. he's like, I was like, I forgot the guy. I always say he's fucked up. He's probably like, that's fucked up. But to me, I was like, in my mind, I'm like, yo, this nigga. I was like, I was like oh, my God. He was I, my first show, you're the first person I saw it, and I was scared shitless to walk in here because it was, it was a different world once yeah. you're in that little thing. Yeah. It's dark. It's just, I was like, he's like, thank you so much. I was like, <laughs> I couldn't believe it, man. It got me, I got goosebumps being thinking about that. But, uh, but, but it's so crazy that these dudes, he like, he's like, I, I drive a truck. I was like, how does this nigga even get a job? This nigga's fucking out. Like, but I'm saying, but he has a regular job. You know, he's got, yeah. A lot of dudes here that can go to shows. And you bump into the guy, and, and, and you see the guy for how many years, and you don't even know the fucking name or what he does for a living. Right? Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's even weirder. Right? Uh huh. Because I, I'm always like, well, yo, what's your, where, where you from? What's your nationality? I'm always like, that's how I grew up. I mean, kids nowadays like, ah, I'm white. I'm like, the fuck you mean white? Tell me so. What the fuck are you? Especially kids on the, on the West Coast. I'm white. What the fuck you mean? Yeah, they like, it's weird. It's like they, in California, they do shit like that. Well, you're like. Uh, I had a, a Puerto Rican flag in my house. They thought it was a Texas flag. I was like, you niggas are dumb. <laughs> I'm like, are you fucking saying Mexican niggas? I was like, oh, you're from Chile? I was like, what the fuck are you talking? It's a Puerto Rican flag. <laughs> a Texas flag? Or anything. Weird. <laughs> it's weird. The, whole, the world's just different, bro, man. I'm, I'm happy I'm from New York City, bro. Yeah, from Queens. for sure. I'm happy and yeah. proud. So the five boroughs, no matter what, people talk shit about all, oh, oh, they make fun of Queens, Brooklyn, Staten Island. Better wherever you're from. You know, it's, it's right like now, more, more yeah. like... You mean right mm -hmm. now people are getting filtered out with all this shit going they on? Don't, they don't. They don't listen. They don't want. They're leaving. <laughs> there's no more accents. So my, my girl, my girl's 27 years old, and she looks at me and she's like, "No one speaks like you anymore." I'm like, "Ah, oh, fuck." <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna look. My son doesn't even speak. My son's like California, hey, dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 like Venice, it's, it's, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's like, oh shit, man. It's like, but there's some kids still like we go go Staten Island. You go into fucking Brooklyn, like Graves, and there's still guys talking yeah, like Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah. So it's crazy. Keep going, guys. But how was uh, <laughs> how was going to CBGBs back in the day? You remember your first time there? Yeah, it was. Uh, I moved with Chaka, uh, Sasha Jenkins, Free Five, Hush. It was Absolution, and oh, it was that your first show was at yeah, CBGBs. Yeah, eighty-seven. Yeah, and that was also the first venue you played at, too, right? No, the first, this is crazy, the first venue I ever played okay. was Davey Vans, the graffiti writer, M -O, uh, yeah. M.O.D., hey, the Bushwick, uh, after, after school, what do we call it, the, 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 the Bushwick, I played the Bushwick Projects, the first show. Crazy, it was, yeah. was it outdoors? It was, no, it was in the was, after school special, the center, <laughs> they had the center, the, the kid center. Word. Yo, his mother caught me tagging. <laughs> On the door, I got caught. She's like, oh, it's like yelling me in Spanish. I was like, but that was my first show. Word. My first show playing, I was in a band called uh, Discipline. And you were doing, the, you were doing yeah, the bass, yeah. right? And uh, uh, Demise played too. And then I know back then there was, 
when you started going to shows, there was a bunch of racist skinheads at the show, and you, you and your crew would. Yeah, but you know what? It's, it's, it's just not, now this back again. It's like, like there's, there's racist people out all over. It's, it's, mm-hmm. it's so insane, bro. Because like I don't understand what happened. You know, we, we, it's, it's, you got to police your own shit. That's what it is. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Because like no matter what, this I want this whole po- politics shit, bro. I, would, I didn't give a fuck about politics when I was a kid. I don't give a fuck. And then now I was like, well, you got to do this. And I'm yeah. like, yo, bro, listen. I The reason why I do hardcore is I don't give a fuck about that shit. You know what I mean? The people in, in Europe, all right, they, they, they were like, they were punk rockers. I understand that. It was very political, but I don't give a fuck about that. You know, I always say all cops are bastards. My father was a cop. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, he'd beat the shit out of me if I said that. He'd fuck mm-hmm. me up. So, like, you know, in New York City, cops are different than cops in Florida. LA are the worst cops I've seen in my life. Yeah, and they just know why because they're not from there. They're military dudes. They get out mm-hmm. and they want a job, and they got gang members shooting at them. So they're like, "Oh yeah. shit!" You know, so they hate everyone that looks like like anyone like a gang member or anything like that. Yeah. But cops in New York is like working sanitation mm-hmm. or yeah. the department of uh, DEP. Yeah, like they all live here. City yeah. job. You need to start for benefits. That's all it is, bro. Yeah, if you think about it, like now with the whole like racism just out and about yeah. if more people did what you and your squad did and just you like you said police your own stuff you know, but no but nowadays nowadays it's it's dangerous it's, a, I try, it's just funny because like, people get canceled shit they stuff they look at shit I'm like yeah. why are you even looking at so much shit from like 10 years ago you know, like comedians so you know, looking at uh, joe rogan and another guy what's the guy of the Louis C.K. and shit. But, 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 no, no, but, that guy, <laughs> that guy, but that guy, but they, they were down. You know what happened with that? The bitches, were, the, the bitches, I, mean, I can't say that nowadays, but the bitches, they were, they were, they, they were like, oh, well, listen, if, you, if you're going to go hang out with Scarhead after 12 o'clock on a fucking Friday night, and you think nothing's going to happen in the fucking back room, you're a fucking stupid. You know, they, 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 what the fuck's wrong with you, old woman? Get the fuck out of here. Any girl who hangs out with guy in a bar at 12 o'clock from 12 to 3 and, and don't hang out with a bunch of fucking cri- uh, criminal gangsters and you don't think something, something's going to happen, you're a fucking retarded. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm saying. They're, 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 we are what we are. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's like, it's like, 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 why did it happen? You know why it happened. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm a nice guy, but you push me to a point. If I say it one, two, the third time, you can't stab me in the throat three times. You know? mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Sometimes it's going to happen. But, yeah, like, yeah. but I'd rather talk it out, right? We're going to talk shit out. But it's like all the stories you hear. Yeah, some shit might some shit might be true, some might be what I'm saying, but it's all not for reasons. That reason I go to some hey motherfucker, you know, all cops are bastards, I hit him in the head for no reason. You know, it's like people like people in hardcore love to be uh to, 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 uh the backstories and all that. Which is funny because I always laugh and stuff, but most most of the times if there's a fight between some guys and some cool guy, oh this guy fuck this guy, it's always over a girl. No it's no matter what. Like he's mad. He's, he's like I got dudes. I like to say this dudes get mad. Fuck those guys. I'm like why? They're nice guys. The guy bought all my shit. Why him? Because his, he fucked his girlfriend, ex girlfriend five years ago. That's all it is the whole time. Mm-hmm. So you gotta laugh and stuff. You know, there, there are things in life that are really bad that you really have to deal with. So just stuff like this, like who slept with who or yeah, who yeah. went over my 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 O. And it, it, come on, bro, stop it. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's things in life that are, that are horrible and, 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 and you're too young. If I could tell you guys right now, just let let some shit go because it's some shit. It's not worth it. Right? Yeah. You, know, you guys are young. You have your whole lives, man. Don't fucking fuck it over over, over some stupid bitch. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Or some stupid guy you know, who's fucking retarded. You know, like. like you think it, as you grow older, you're less likely to fight over some things that otherwise you, know you would have been... It depends, because I'm saying, like, right now, like, if, if I'm walking down the street right now, and I see some guy, some guy drunk smack his girlfriend from me, I'm going to be like, yo, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. yeah. And the guy's going to be like, and then I'm going to beat the shit out of the guy, she's probably going to hit me, I'm probably going to get locked up, but still, it's, I still got to say something, you understand? Know yeah. yeah. That's all That's all it is, I still got to say something, even if... Even, it's like, even when your friend's wrong, would you do something? Mm-hmm. And, and, your, and your friend's like right here, he, you know he's wrong for doing, going over the guy, whatever. Then later on, you bring him over. You say, hey, you check you're, my bro, you're my boy. I love you. Mm-hmm. But don't do that shit, bro. You're fucking wrong. But I got your back. But this is all, I'm more than you want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it. But you know, it's, speaking, it's, of, speaking of that, I heard the story about uh, you saw some girl smacking his, uh, you saw some dude smacking his girl up. And you. Oh, God damn you ended up, uh, you, you, you know, no one was saying anything about it. So you were like, yo, that's a girl. And he was like, and what? And then you were like, I hit back. And then he ended up, yeah, yeah. you got jumped or what? No, I just. Like, did he, did he stab you or his friend stabbed we, you? We both stabbed each other. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've been stabbed like three times. I don't know what's going on. Every time my thing's going to stop, it's like, this is keep on your thing. I'm like, motherfucking stab. But then again, I would stab myself too if I was going to fight myself. Right? Yeah, yeah. You know, what would you do? You know, so. But it's, it takes, you know, when someone pulls a gun out, right? I've been to people shooting a shoot. You can, anyone can do that. Stab someone personally up, like, yeah, yeah. That's some personal shit, bro. Mm-hmm. That's like, even, even, even if you got someone scared, but still, he had to stab me. That's like, fucking, what? yo, you just can't stab me? Mm-hmm. It's, it's crazy, bro. Yeah. So, for example, with that dude, when, when you guys were about to fight, did he? Did you know he had a knife on him? Did Yo, you not I care? The craziest shit right here, you guys. Know, life as we know it is so crazy. His homeboy was getting beat down by his girl. <laughs> you know, I was like, Yo, my boy. So I was like, Yo, everyone around me was like, Yo, I would do something. But I'm, a, I'm a probate. I was like, yeah. Oh my god! I was like, my, I was just, it was just fucked up. But mm-hmm. the thing is. The dude that stabbed me, he, he was not going to fight fair one whatsoever. Skinny jeans. He looked like one of the Migos. Okay. He got stabbed by one of the Migos. <laughs> the Migos stabbed me up. <laughs> I was saying, but so I was like, yo, hey, I hit, yo, hit him once. He fell on the floor. He ran right to his car. I was like, damn, this nigga's going to stab me. You know, because I was fighting the other guy, but I was fucked up. And the only reason I survived that, that my boy got hit from, from twice, got hit twice from pipe. Fucked him down. So it was me and fight. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, shout out to... to uh, Chris Hoax came out, and uh, one of my other, I'm not going to say no other names, but my other boy was coming from Low East Side, okay. was coming by, he said, yo, E, and I was like, what? But I, I, I was like, yo, dude, I had a long day, I was sober, he's like, yo, E, and he's, you know, and guy buck 50 him. So, so he got caught buck 50, and he's about to come over here, so he's like, maxing buck 50. So, but he, was for him, I would got killed. He threw me something, and, and then we started going, it was, it was, yo, he, it was it was bad, but we we'll, yeah, yeah whatever. But the thing is, it wasn't for that guy coming by. I ain't wasn't supposed to see this guy. Ever. I haven't seen this guy in, in a year. It's insane. How crazy is that? It's for life. And it wasn't. I was like, thank you, God. I was like, thank you. You know. But um. And then his girl was still was still pissed. No, at you. she chased him. She was like, because I was fucking homeboy up. She yeah, yeah. She tried to hit me too. She was like, hit me. I was like, yo, what the fuck? And you're helping her. Yeah, yeah. 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 And my boys, man. What if we, I bet they're all fucking her right now. I was like, okay. I'm like, oh well, fuck up. I was like, yo, who the fuck cares, man? Like, like, you know what? I would do it again. Yeah. But so it's like, I, you know, I got you got mom, sister, aunts, you know, the sister see something. Yeah. You know, and, and you know, you know, homegirls in a bad relationship mm-hmm. because that's. Right into them from their father or their boyfriend. You know, they, I mean, they, they, their, father, their, their father used to beat the mother. They watched her the whole life. They, they, they see someone like the father. And they, you know, they think it's normal. You know, mm-hmm. so sad, sad world we live in, bro. Yeah, and then you were going. Uh, you went to school for criminal justice, right? How the hell you know this shit? I did my homework, bro. I did no, my you homework, went, bro. Like one, one, one year, one semester. One year. I went, one <laughs> I, went there, I went there early, a year early, because they said my 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 math grades were so horrible. I got to go for a summer school. I was like, and I went there for a year for like a, like two semesters there, so a year. But and then I was like, fuck. I, I caught a. Ah, it's just, it's just, I was catching. I was catching charges, like attempted murder charge, and some other, some other third degree, second degree assault. And right then, I was like, "Fuck!" I, you know, it's like my. my you father, were catching these charges as you were in school for criminal they, justice. They, 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 well, right out of it. Oh, okay, okay. So, so. All right. But then I was like, but "My father was like, what are you doing? This is just getting a regular job." You know, I was like, but "You said like if you if it wasn't for music, you would have been like a cop or a firefighter." Or you know what? Like I, could, I, I I took the I took the cop test and I did great, and they I was supposed to go to my uh, psychiatric test and never went. I was like, "You know what happened?" Basically, I could talk right now. Uh, my father, when he was a cop, was the biggest dick in the world. Okay. Not because he's a dick. My father was the hardest niggas in the world. I my father had a buck fifty from here to here. You know, but I, I, the first time I saw stitches or buck fifty was on my father. So I, I remember little kids touching like the, the staples and they were like five years old. Like, ah! <laughs> yeah, so my, I'd be like, "Mommy, what happened?" He goes, "Your fucking father's mouth." <laughs> my father's ill. You know, so I, oh, man, it, it's just. I was uh, my, my, I loved my father, but when he was a cop, he took that shit home. Mm-hmm. He was a cop from '62 to '82. The worst. He was in Spanish Harlem and Bushwick. Oh my god! Two, yeah. like, Ten years yeah, each. Yeah, yeah. So it was the worst time. Cops. The New York City was the worst for '62 to '82. So I used to get beaten all the time. You know, I could talk about it now, but when after he retired from police officers, and we became friends, 
and he never hit. You know, after that, it was like crazy. Like it was all from the job. So that's why I'm saying, like, if you're a cop and you're a good cop, you have a heart. That, that's just gonna affect you no matter what. You're gonna take it out on your family. That's why sometimes I don't cop to dicks. I'm like, yo, these guys, especially when everyone hates, now everyone hates these motherfuckers. You can't do anything. I'm like, you know, but, you know, the cops around in, like, the world, we, we're from, we're in the United States, guys. Yo, you know, I've been all over the world. You've been, you travel the world, right? Like, you've been all these mm-hmm. different countries. Yeah, yeah. Listen, when you fuck up in another country, you're missing a finger or fucking yeah, you catch a beating or you get shot in the back. You know? Yeah, yeah it's a know? different story. Over here in the United States, we, we get book deals and fucking, I'm a serial killer. I killed your mother and your sister, but I'm getting a book deal. That's not going to happen. I think in Russia, they like, oh, you're a serial killer? Come here, let's go, we'll, we'll talk to you. Bop, shoot in the head, that's exactly. it. It's over, it's over. That's it, I'm saying. So, like, people talk all this shit. You know, I'm like, yo, bro, I'd rather be here. I've been all over the world, third world countries. I, 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 Puerto Rico, I'd rather stay here. I'd be, oh, go back to Puerto Rico. Fuck that shit. Keep Puerto Rico over there, man. You know, Puerto Rico, I love Puerto Rico. But Puerto Rico right now, you get killed in a second. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? People get crazy, bro. That's how it is. You know? So what did you think about the whole, like, Talking about cops and stuff, the whole George Floyd, everything that happened. That, all that, that. that was that, 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 this whole shit's crazy. Bro. Yeah, for sure. So my, you know, I, I, I know, I know people, Trump supporters, and I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm like, I, I, I don't give a fuck about politics. So yeah. I, I want someone to help us. You know? Yeah, it makes both sides. But uh, fucking, what's that? Biden. The, oh, yeah. That guy's a fucking weirdo. Yeah, right? the, the, the names, the faces don't matter. Let's yeah. see the fucking changes. You yeah, know? I want changes. I want people <laughs> just to be cool, right? So like. Yo, it's, it's just fucked up. Trump is a businessman, and, and, and it's fucked up. We even elected that guy. Yeah. Can I think you know what I'm saying? Just like people are like, no, we elected a businessman who don't give a fuck. Yeah. He doesn't want to make money. And, and people are like, he's a whack businessman. No, he's smart. He pretends he's bankrupt. Like, you know what I mean? These dudes are like, his whole life, and he's from Queens. You know he's fucking fucked up. Mm-hmm. You, know? <laughs> like, you know that guy's fucked up, bro. And we're about to, he might win again. I, he will. He, he, you've been to Long Island. <laughs> you've, been, you've, been, you've been all over the country. They yeah, love yeah. fucking Trump, bro. Uh-huh. Florida, the Cubans, yeah, they all. Yeah. Scam is a Trump guy. I'm like, nigga, first you you his brother, I'm scared of Trump. I'm like, Vietnam, I'm like, Dom, you can't even vote. You're fucking, you're, <laughs> <laughs> you are the worst. <laughs> he said. You, you can't even vote, so don't talk. Okay? Convicted felons over there. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Shout out to Vietnam and scammed us. Yo, so real quick, um, how did Crown of Thorns come about? How'd, oh. you, how'd you start that band? Franklin, my Franklin, the bass player, Frank and Rye, is from Jack's Heights. So okay. we grew up on the same on 31st Avenue. And Franklin was a. Uh, Franklin's bro- Franklin used to hang out with Jam's brother, Andrea. Andreas. And, and, they, and, they, and we used to be like, yo, they. Oh, these niggas smoking crack. They were like, like crackheads, metalhead crackheads back in then. And he had like a Voivod haircut. Like he, he's Asian, so he'd be Korean, so he had his hair like flipped like this. Mm-hmm. They're all just shaved. But he was dark hell. He's like dark Korean. I mean, nigga, you're, you're, you're like Thai or Filipino, nigga. You're not all Korean. <laughs> Your mother's lying to you. Okay. He's like, fuck you, asshole. But he's dark Korean, yo. And we used to bug out, so he played bass, and he hooked up with uh, a band called Show of Force with a guy, Randy, who was a Colombian kid. Um, Who's uh, Randy's sister got married Mike DeJean when he was young. Okay. Mike, guitar player. Mm-hmm. So Mike DeJean, when I got stabbed up, Franklin came to see me. He goes, to start a band. And I was like, all right, let's do it. And from when I got out and we started practicing, that was it. Start, started at St. Vincent's Hospital. Really? So I started, yeah. Because yeah, so. you were in there because you, cause you, you got stabbed? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then you were writing, you wrote all those songs, all the lyrics? Yeah, all the lyrics, yeah. Except for... Uh, it's funny because I was looking the other day, my boy. All right, Chevy, there's um, uh, Ice Pick. Yeah, yeah. That fucking song was the mm-hmm. last song that we had to do the lyrics. I said, I got no lyrics. I'm sitting down there. All of a sudden, I called. God, I forgot where it was. Uh, I called my sister. She's like, I got a poem. So she gave me a poem. Then my boy, Deep, Deep Down from Scarhead, had a, a band called Arrogant Response from Jersey. And it was like more like almost like... Uh, Life of Aggie style, piece, yeah. the, like tribal negative. Mm. Okay. He wrote the, the, the I Hate You, that song. He, he, wrote, he wrote the chorus. And my, my sister wrote one of the, one of the verses, and I wrote the other verse. Mm. So that's the only time I used that, the lyrics. If I put them all together, ran in the spot. I wrote, I wrote the lyrics, put them together, right in, I ran to the studio, wrote it right there. And the Train Yard Blues album, that's like a. We did that at Rockaway. That's like a tribute to Graf. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. you got. It's that was like, before Pro Tools, bro. Okay. So. I took the thing from uh, uh, what's 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 the movie uh, with, with uh, uh, you talking about the cover art? 
No, the cover art is from the Bronx. Over there, but, uh, okay. Uh, Nick One did that. Took that picture. Okay. But I'm talking about the beginning. The the, the, the samples of mm-hmm. uh, Cap mm-hmm. Blood Wars. Yeah. We sampled that over the music. Wild Side. Yeah, from Wild Side. Yeah, we but we sampled. It was a sampler. The first Star sampler we, it was on the computer. I never even seen that. I, I, like it was before Pro Tools and. We we did that at Rockway 116, the most white trash, horrible place in the world. Like Rockway, and that's why John Joseph is from over there too. Like you look, you can tell he's from over there. The way like weird, like Irish guys are looking this way. They're crazy. We're like, yo, anyone been to 116 in Rockway? It's the worst. It's like it's like it's like you took Mastic Beach, Arkansas, and fucking. Kent, Ohio, put it together. You know, yeah. It's fucking horrible. Like it's, like, it'll be like some black dude with all silver chains, like Mr. Yeah. T. Yeah, I was working over there by Redfern Houses. Uh, yeah, yeah, fucked shit. up, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, it's up. pretty bad. But it's we were, bad. We were working over there because I'm in construction yeah. in the union. They, we, they, in the daytime, they found like a body in a fucking black bag, like a trash bag outside. Like recently, this yeah, is recently. It's, it's so fucked yeah, up yeah. out there, man. It's, it, the people out there are so fucked up because like crazy Irish dudes and crazy like. White Irish girl with a bamboo earrings and a half fucking Vaseline bag and some black guy pimping her. I'm like, yo, what the fuck's going on here? Yeah. Guidos. <laughs> like, yo, we had a big fight out there. And night, <laughs> we, had a, we fought the whole beach. Yeah, we get all here. Tell the story. We fought the whole beach 116. And it was like, yo, <laughs> the, the, yo we were in the Gazette. The Queen's Gazette. Okay. Yo, they, they, so the whole beach, it was like crazy fucking bikers and Guidos and metalheads. And my boy, Mike Scorsese, was fighting a fair one with them, fucked the guy up. So I, we're like, yo, I was like, let's get the fuck out of here. So we're Saab from Marauder, rest in peace, Saab was there. Jorge from Marauder was there. He got arrested with me. Me, Jorge, got arrested together. It was fucked up over there. So, But the fight was, they came, they rushed us, and we're like, yo, Jorge's like, fuck that. I said, Jorge, don't do it, please. Please, please these, these niggas are going to kill us. And we're like, they're, they're getting us. So they're, they're basically... Chasing us off the beach, but we're walking. Like, yeah, fuck, we're like, yeah, fuck you niggas. And all of a sudden, the, the, the riot police came with the horses. Yep. So I, I was hoist, I was talking shit. And I was like, yo, they're gonna take. Hoist said, what's up now, nigga? DMS, yo, blah, blah, blah. This is like 1987. Yo, these <laughs> niggas went through the whole riot police. They, they, they attacked us. It was an all out fight, man. It was, a, it was the biggest fight. It was the, the Gazette. I got arrested. My, my uh, it was fucked up. My brother got fucked up. My mother was so mad at me. She had to get me out of jail. She said, hey, my, yo, my brother was, it was, we, we, it was such a big thing. It was, it was so funny. I remember I was at a pizzeria and they cornered me in the pizzeria and I had the igloo, the, yeah. with, you know, the box. Yeah, 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 the yeah. Yeah. So they're like, yo, what's up now? And I was like, oh, I took the pointers out. I put them around the handle. I was like, bye, <laughs> they said, bye. <laughs> explode on. I said, tw- three. Four, and all sit there, the whole crowd went against me, they grabbed me, and went to play. Oh, it was fucked up, man. The horse fell in, my boy Narc TMS. But Sick of an Hour was there, Three Dollars Steve. It was, a, if you ask anyone, it was a big, it was one of the biggest fights ever. But how many a, of, how many of you, how many of them? I mean, I, I, seriously, how many of us? Yeah. Twelve. Okay. Fifteen. And how many of them? Like 300. <laughs> it, was like, no, it was like, it was like a hundred niggas came at us. Yeah, and we yeah. were talking, yo, they, we thought, oh, some Puerto Rican niggas, but they were with the most shit. So we didn't know Guido's. They were all down with each other. Yeah, yeah. And we were like, yo, these niggas are like, but they, they died out of They would have killed me. They, they hated me. They, they, they grabbed the thing out of my hand. I was like, oh, this nigga killed me now. <laughs> no, it was funny. It was, <laughs> I haven't thought about that in a long time, but it was, it was insane. It was insane. So yeah, bro. The fucking so the train the train yard the train yard the train yard it's blues. All true. Why, why do we get comments? Man, fuck him. <laughs> My nose. The train yard uh, blues album, and then <laughs> then came mentally vexed. Yeah, mentally vexed was. Uh, I to me, mentally vexed was a it was a great record, but people don't know about what who was supposed to uh, first was to produce mentally vexed. AJ Novello produces Mike to John. Grew up with AJ from Leeway, but I wanted Walter for Quicksand was supposed to produce it, but I got voted out. You know, imagine if Walter produced that. Did he get voted out? I got voted out because they got the Neanderthals, so they wanted to fucking uh, hardcore. I was like, you know, but imagine if Medley Vex was, was produced by Walter, it, and, but just the, the sound and the, the harmonizing and the. the I was, but I never sang before. Really? That's all. So. That was your first time on vocals? Yeah, yeah. I never sang. Okay. So. Were you but, going for a specific style with, with, the, with the Crown of Thorns? Or, like, who were your influences? My influences? Vocals at the time? Yeah. 
Anthony Commonality, Killing Time. Mm. Yeah, you're great. You can tell. Hey, when, I, when, when I showed Anthony the fucking the Train Out Blues fucking demo, I said, yo, you like it? He goes, sounds like us. I was like, asshole. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, like, yeah, I used to go out with his sister. Okay. So Bob Ryan. So that's why he was my best friend. He's like my older brother. So he was like, yo, he, he kind of got mad at me. <laughs> He's like, you sound like, like, yo, like, you sound like Killing Time. I was like, and he was right. He said, I was like, but I wanted to pat on my back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, big brother. Mm -hmm. like, but shout out to Anthony Caminale. I love you, motherfucker. Where do those lyrics come from? <sighs> the lyrics, are, that's, that's the problem with, uh, not a problem. That's what li life's about. Like, uh, when you put a record out, you know, some, you know, some people do acting and you see something, you see a movie, and it's like, oh shit. Then you see another movie, it's like, it's, it's like late night on a fucking, like a B movie, like, what happened? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know what I'm saying? Money, whatever, but I'm saying it's, it's also, it's also a time in your life. Every, every time you do music, something else happens. And uh, it reflects everything. Because okay. you, even you don't know it's, re it's reflecting you and, and, and making you do something different, it is doing it. So, well, Crown Thorns first happened, my, my brother killed himself. So, that all that all those lyrics are about just about my, like, basically my brother. That's, I, I, it's, it was so weird because Scarhead is so different. You know what I mean? Yeah. But Crown, Th Crown Thorns is like for us. Smart people. Scarheads for retards. You know, can't say that. Can't say that. Mm -hmm. Like you know, basically, everyone loves Scarhead oh, in Europe and whatever. It's like the same guy that loves Slayer and Hate Breed. You know? mm -hmm. So, so, but Scar, but Crown Thorns is like if you listen to the Cure or you listen to fucking uh, Morrissey, you, you like Crown Thorns. Mm -hmm. you know, I think that's what I'm trying to say. Like you like more emotional, uh, emotional intact with your feelings. That's what most intact. Mm, you stood out like you were mixing different genres of like metal, hip hop, yeah. punk. Like it was more. Like, it sounded more like Rush. Yeah, yeah. you kind of called it thugcore, right? Yeah, yeah. with well, the thugcore, Scarhead. Yeah. Scarhead's more for the graffiti, mm -hmm. and you know, like, and it, but it's funny because Crown Thorns is when I was really into graffiti. You know what I mean? Like, really? Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean the Train Yard Blues and the yeah. The, the, and yeah. It, it's it, and they over they overlap sometimes, but I like push the different. You know. This is this, and this is this. I mean, so. So that was would you use you would use the crown of thorns, kind of like a coping mechanism. Well, with, with the, uh, uh, with, listen, I'm gonna tell you a story right now and make you guys all laugh. Crown of thorns came out '94. Then the '96 came out. When, when crown of thorns came out '96, the mentally vexed, I started really cope by doing the acid and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like, but still, I, I, I didn't do any kind of like hard drugs or anything like that. You know what I mean? So, but, but the second my boy Yas, KAC, uh, passed away, he died in 96. They, on his, he died, this guy used to be like, we used to hang out, be a, he was Japanese. He, he was, you know, Yas was crazy. He's from Fresh Metal. Shout out to all the Fresh Metals, KAC, Kings That Crime, uh, Raps and everyone, Lash, I love you. Uh, those guys, were like Fresh Mouse. To me, Fresh Mouse was like next to Bayside, which is to me like Long Island. You mm -hmm. mean, it's just different from Jackson Heights. You yeah, mean, like, yeah, it's yeah. different world. You mean, like, I think Astoria, Jackson Heights, Elmhurst, Woodside are more like the same thing, Corona, more same thing. I think like Ridgewood, Middle Village uh, are, are more same, or Woodhaven, that's the most same. Uh, uh, so it's different, like, when I moved from Jackson Heights to Woodhaven, I was like, what the fuck is this? These are, like, real Guido niggas, bro. Like, these are, this, oh, shit, John Guy is walking down the street. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? You know, then it would be, like, metalhead dudes, like, at the Dome, yeah, dude. Like, that would be, like, crazy fucking, it was just crazy, man. It's diff different worlds, man. You know, like, like, Jackson Heights, you Jackson Heights is like Corona. You you're from the neighborhood, and you and you understand people from the neighborhood. You understand what I'm talking about? Like when yeah. you walk in the neighborhood, when you walk in Corona Spaghetti Park, you know what's up, and you know where not to do, mm. you're not to ride on, what to do. So the, the kids nowadays don't know that shit, man. Yeah. Hey, they don't know like 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 everyone thinks just because someone's loud and crazy and the one that the tattoos, you know, oh he's scared. Like no, that's not. I'm not scared of guys. I know I'm scared of the, the old guys in my neighborhood who are 90 years old still shaking down fucking bakeries and shit. You know what I'm and they look at me. I'm like, oh shit, look at me. The nigga look at me. <laughs> yo, ask the shout the scam does this. Yo, I always tell him the other day, there's, a, there's an old dude, old two gangster, still gangster as hell. And when he looks at me, I'm like, oh, this nigga's looking at me. Chill. I'm like, yo, he always hates me. He knows me since I was a kid. But he's like, oh, he's disgusted by me. He's like, what? He has the tattoos or anything. What are you doing? But this guy. Has mad bodies. I'm like, this guy at least killed like like 
20 people. So, like, so that's it. And he's like 90. So I'm like, I'm going that. I see homeboy. I go, I'm like, oh, shit. I don't even look his way. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. So you guys think there's some guys dressed up in a motorcycle and a pageant? And a, mm -hmm. uh, nah, it's, you know, real, real people from real people who really take care of business are dudes are quiet and be like, oh, cool. And they be, hey, how you doing? You know, those I know guys that grow up, a, a hitman now that just like, hey guys, hey, hey, Danny, how's your mom doing? And I'm like, yeah, I'm not home. Shut the door. You're like, wait, you're in. Dudes are, it's all you know. So how you act, bro. People respect you if if you if you need, if you show respect, people will respect you. You understand? It's the way. If you're an asshole, people will treat you like an asshole. Mm -hmm. That's that's it. Yeah. Show respect to people like you. Like your, your kids are young, bro. I'm bugged out when I walked in here because I thought I would see your mom and dad give me tea. I was, <laughs> I was like, wait, mom, dad. I thought your sister's gonna come out playing ball. So I'm gonna get <laughs> but I'm like, oh, shit, it's cool because like. I couldn't do this right now, but the age you guys are. Uh -huh. I, I was so fucking out of my mind. You know, it, it, oh, it was crazy. That was it, that's. It was just crazy. The lifestyle was crazy, man. You know, it, it was totally different, bro. So where were you at when you were 24? I was in Jackson Heights. I moved back to Jackson Heights. <laughs> I, we had a, a house called 3140, and and um, it was right by Castle Heights. You know, right uh, 34th Ave, and uh, off 34th, and um. We would party there so hard. This house was so fucking horrible. We would have uh, um, bedding. Everyone would have ankle braces on. One time, they, these guys, just, a gun fell out. I heard, pop, pop. And, then, and my landlord had to come upstairs. We stay shot up the thing. My, my landlord was like, didn't even know what happened. The old Chinese ladies, they didn't know what happened. Her, her daughter, her, her daughter went, was in, went to the Marines, and they shot up a 22 and got stuck. But didn't go through. But imagine if that's what would have killed the fucking lady. Every, yeah, we would have been all locked up for forever. Over <laughs> arguing over fucking cars, friends. Crazy. That, that shit would happen all the time. It was, it was crazy. How old were you when you, you said in the New York Hardcore Chronicles that you have squatted? How old were you when you oh, squatted? Oh, I squatted. Oh, I squatted. Squat. I, I, I was young. I, uh, first of all, my, my landlord, my slumlord was Roger Moret from Nazi Fronts. Okay. So. so so that motherfucker, he, he was trying to make me pay rent in a fucking squat and had no glass, no fucking windows. I said, nigga, put windows in. So he comes in and puts plexiglass. I'm like, nigga, give me put plastic on the shit. Like, can't open the shit. You know, he, Roger's the best. Happy birthday, Roger. But uh, Roger had a squat and it was like right off of the top of Square Park. And we all lived there. Me, Freddie Manball, uh, OZ, um, even like the Hoyer, the Hoyer State in Queens. Like, he really didn't hate squats. You mean? So. But I hate, I hate squats too. Like, people are like, I oh, squat, it was cool. I, fuck that. I want running water. I want fucking course, take a shower. Yeah, I want into, I, now, if I don't have Wi Fi now, I'll cry. I mean, that's, 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 yeah, yeah. So I was like, where the fuck's the Wi Fi? In Europe, I'm crying. <laughs> so, what, what neighborhood was that in? Oh, it's Lower East Side. Lower East Side yeah. squat in? Yeah. How long did you do that for? Like a year. Yeah? Yeah. How come, how come you did that? You got like kicked out of your house or what happened? No, I was, I was working. Because we had a fantasy of being the lowest side. Yeah. And, you know, the lowest side. And, and, and I was like, fuck it. I was like, who wants, to, who wants to move back to your mom's house after you get, you know what I mean? Like, you go somewhere else and boom, they was like, I need a place to stay. So we lived there for a year. I, mm -hmm. I thought it was, it was just weird. You know? But the people were cool because uh, Amy from Nausea was Roger's wife at the time. And she was like the one that came out. You, you had to like everyone had to chip in. Like, uh, hey, I'll clean to take the garbage out. We, were, I was like, fuck that shit. I'm not paying. I'm not squat. Like, I'm not paying money. I'm doing nothing. You know? Wait, so what? You just find a random crib? It, no, it wasn't. Roger made this crib like this. It was like really beautiful. Running, he he would take the electricity from uh, the 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 the, 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 the lamp posts. Yeah, yeah. But in the backyard or something, he would do it. Just back in the day, you could do shit like that. Yeah. You know? So he would just get a random crib, set it up nice like this, and, and live in. Oh yeah, it'd be a ba yo. Listen, it would look like Bay, the Lower East Side looked like Beirut in the eighties. Okay, it was, you guys could walk. No one could walk on there. It was yeah. fucked up, man. Yeah, we were really talking cool. to John Joseph. He was telling yeah, us stories about that. Yeah, he's true. What he's saying. Yeah. He, I know people that know John Joseph. <laughs> yeah, you know, I know John Joseph like the real John Joseph. The, 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 the John, nice John vegan like Chris. That nigga is crazy. That nigga. The, the reason, <laughs> first of all, his name is Blood Clyde. The rosters <laughs> called him Blood Clyde. So you gotta be an ill nigga for Rossos to be plucked like isn't the guy here. Think about it. You know, mm -hmm. he is, I love you, John, but he's like one of the biggest criminals back in the day. Mm -hmm. you know, he, I, I usually look up to them as, as being a criminal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and a criminal, but he, I looked up to him. 
So he was one of the bands that one of the, one of the most evilest motherfuckers in the world. Yeah, but he's changed his life around. Yeah, Since yeah, he's living a really positive life now. Good for him, man. I love him. He's like he's the, him and him and Harley. The whole thing. I always just stayed out of it. Mm -hmm. Then I had then I got into it because the guy did something. But like I say, it's I, I thought the Cro-Mags with Harley and John together could have been the biggest thing in the world. You know what I mean? But it's like. People are like, why well, can't I do it? Yo, some foul shit happens, bro. Yeah. And you guys only know it's this shit back there that between those two guys, and it's foul, man. Then, then you understand. It's, it sucks because when you want, when you love someone, they don't love someone. When you respect someone, you're a little kid. You meet, that's why when I, did, when, when I went, went to Hollywood, L.A., and I got signed by Charles Barker, I, when I met some people, I didn't want to meet them because they're dicks. You know, I mean, like, it hurt me, man. Like, the person that you love on TV yeah. when you're a little kid is the biggest fucking dick. You know what I mean? Yo, similar to graffiti, too, man. Yo, no, that's the... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but at least graffiti guys think they're famous. But, you know, they can yeah, ride on the wall yeah. and yeah. fuck up. And, and you know, they don't talk about that. I'm a graffiti head, bro. I, I'm, I'm, I'm respecting the graffiti world. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a street kid, you know what I mean? But... Graffiti writes are dicks, you know, especially the ones like all about graffiti. Yeah. Like MQ is about graffiti, but MQ doesn't even, he's, MQ's about, MQ's the king of graffiti, you know. There's certain different kings, like, I, I say like St. TMR is a king, MQ's a king, mm -hmm. PK, Note, 357 is a king, RD is a king, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. You know, I mean, those are kings, you yeah. know. Uh, and, but, you know. Some of these graffiti writers, like nowadays, they're like, oh, I do this. They're like, shut the fuck up, man. Yeah. You know? And I don't know, some of the graffiti writers to me, like, now they're all from other cities and stuff. Mm -hmm. And like, and they, 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 I'm like, it's just to have like art school and they just act weird. Like, I owe you something. Like, you know, like, uh, and they all like to go up to just put on what they do and put on the internet. And yeah, like, on back the then, yeah. I, wish, I wish my mother didn't throw out all my, my graffiti shit, all my things. Because that's hardly like, when I catch something, someone says something old, someone just said something. My boy Dref, shout out to Dref, TMS, that's my brother, uh, Smurf, all those guys, over NFT. Um, I saw, they sent me a picture that I went over as Ghost, and I went over it, then, but really, they don't know that I got some amazing stories about Ghost, and we had, there was wars. I remember one time, this is the best story ever I can tell you right now, make everyone laugh, no one knows. You know, when you, when you have respect, if I fought Ghost, a fair one, and everyone who was there knows what happened, I'm not going to make... Say something to make him feel bad, or whatever, but go at least Ghost fought me. You know what I mean? And I was a young kid. Ghost, when I was young, everyone's like, Ghost, Ghost, he'll kill you. Oh, he's a ninja. Oh, my, like, yo, people tell crazy stories. Then you gotta fight the guy. It's like, oh, fuck. And I did what I did, and I got respect. You know what I mean? But um, the funny story about Ghost is, all right, all right, all right, all right whatever you say, the guy was a guy is a king, right? And he was a white trash warrior. He didn't give a fuck that guy. So <laughs> I remember me and cute this this nigga on a, on a power. Box, uh, and I was like, "Yo, is Ghost this story?" No one knows the story. Just the funniest thing. And you got so mad at me because I was, I took pictures of the whole thing. We we, we did big thing. We just, we just, <laughs> we just, we just thinking shit with a yeah, DMS. And I was like, "All right, let's go back and take pictures." We went back. You know, it came back. He wrote two toys. DMS. <laughs> I can't I was like. I was like, oh, they nigga got us. You know, I just went home. I just went down to the jokes and come back. He, he did two, he wrote two toys. And I he couldn't even take a picture of me dissing him. So I took a picture of him dissing him. And he was so mad. I was like, I, was like, I had to I, you know, I give the guy respect, man. That guy mm -hmm. just dissed us. Yo, we came back like, oh, yeah, we dissed this nigga. He's like, this is a big two toys, DMS. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever get down with the JA versus MQ beef? Oh, hell yeah. The, yeah? The, oh, the, the whole beef was because of me. Really? Yeah. What happened? He, the JA, J, J, oh, the whole beef was over Sasha Jenkins because JA used to put swastikas stickers up. Really? Yeah, yeah. All those, the, the, the people told you, oh, Ghost, Saint, all those all the old white like rock and roll, like classic rock guys, they give a fuck like bikers, they put swastikas. So Jay was doing that, so I was like, I was like, you cross out, that's how I cross out swastikas that me and Jay went to beef. And uh, the first time before Jay, he, he, was, he was like, let's do this. I was like, here, I was like, I'll fight you, B. You know, that's where I met Toby. Mm, really? He's like, well, he's like, I know you from hardcore shows. I was like, get away from him. Fight, fight this nigga. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yeah. He's like, yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm hold on a second. So, so I was like, to, he's like, I'm about to fight <laughs> J1. Like, no, so he, I, we went, not even three seconds and knocked the nigga out. So I turned around and said, yo, I'm, I'm Isaac. You know, so he and he's like, oh, it's like a movie. He's got knocked out. His boy. So then I formed a second time. 
And I was like, Gavin, and his girlfriend pulls a fucking razor on me. Pulls out, and I was like, I said, all right. So I slapped her, blah, she fell on the floor. <laughs> and then I said, what's up, nigga? Bah! He, he, he got knocked out even faster. He was like, what? I was like, the two people on the floor got it. And I was like, I was like, Gavin, thanks for letting me shoot the fair ones. Which Gavin made me, you know, and I left. That was it. Toby's with me that time, time, that time too. Then after that, so crazy, I was like, all right, so I was like, oh, let's go. We, we're jumping in the car. I see this, this dude with dreads. I'm like, yo, what's up? And they're shooting at him again. Oh, it's falls on the floor. I'm like, this is right after I just knocked out, smacked the girl, and knocked Jay out down around the corner. He's like, yo, I got shot. Him and his boy, I said, get in the car. He's, bleeding, he's holding it, and here's a towel. And we drove. I think Jorge was driving, and we pulled, we dropped him off at St. Vincent's. This is so crazy. We dropped him at St. Vincent's, and I, and, and, and I was like, yo, I was just stabbed in there like a year before. I dropped him off. That was it. It was crazy. Crazy. So that's how the world is. No, he, I don't know if the guy. I don't know if his guy lives, died, but he seems like yo, later, bro. He's like, shot. Like, but you never know. You know? So that's how the that's how the J beef started. The J beef started. Yeah, I knocked him out twice. Right? But I don't want to. You know, now the whole world knows. But let's say, but he probably like, you know, but you know what? I give it to him. He's like he's like a cockroach. He won't stop that guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then MQ started writing over him after that. They they had another thing. J. We had beef with everyone. We had beef with RFC back then. So a lot of shit was happening. So we had beef with this. When you, so say, when you say they, you mean the DMS graphic. The DMS, DMS crew. We had beef with yeah. everybody. Okay. Same HP boys from over here. But which, 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 a lot of people don't know TA7, which I grew up with. All the kids from Woodside, the Dominican kids. And my, you know, we, I, we all grew up together. But it's funny. Later on, we started to have beef with each other. It was like crazy. You know? And a lot of dudes were either... Selling drugs or or thugging out, you know, the Alf for saying that shit, boys. These guys, dudes, are fucking ill niggas, man. Potch. you guys know these are dudes from saying that shit, boys. Mm-hmm. Saying, but Potch was Chinese, had all gold teeth. He was like, yeah, hey, you know, you ready to cut you in a second? And Alf and uh, uh, RTC, you remember RTC? Mm-hmm. RTC was a he was a, he was a Hindu kid. Yeah. Was he? He's he, 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 he was Chinese. You know? Well, he got mad. He called me Hindu. You know what I'm saying? I was like, "Yo, nigga, whatever." There was a time. You know, you know, but I remember we flew. It was so. It was. You know, they used to diss us. And I remember one time, how we were so stupid and so young. You know, you're like think about your beefy neighbor. And and what we do? JM's like, "Yo, is he Hindu?" I was like, "I, I, I don't know." We fuck this nigga up. Right? So <laughs> so we, so th- we went around. This 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 help. If this happened now, it'd be a cancel. You know, every he used to do faces like this. Right, it took over. We just put a red dot on every head, which every throw up. And I was like, oh, you're, you're the same. Imagine so like, like, like Jew. You know, that's how he used to be, like Jew spit. You know, like, we used to go ahead and tell us. So that was fun. One time, Chase, I'm going to tell you that. That's the most horrible thing ever. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay, okay. But then one guy had a, one guy, did a, I told, one guy had a, I'm going to say no names, but someone died in the hood. And um, we're like, yo, we're going to get these niggas. So we went, we went up there. I said, M, let's go. And we, we went over there, rest in peace, we rest, rest in hell. And we put a, a, we put a bozo clown on his head, a, a nose, like a clown nose and a clown afro. Yo, they wanted to kill us. And that was, that was, that was some beef. If someone did that to my fucking brother, or my, you imagine? You put a picture of your, your boy dies, a gun, and you put, put balloons on him and shit, and like that bozo clown. Yo, niggas want to kill us. That's but, yeah. but that's how it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when you first started writing and you got down with DMS, were they a graph crew or a yeah, hardcore graph, crew? Graph, graph. It started off as a graph crew. It's both. Graph, it's hand to hand. People think, that's another thing. People think uh, just because hip hop is graffiti hip hop. Nah, graffiti, when I was young, the people into graffiti were straight up Puerto Rican niggas and fucking white boys, like like, like metal head dudes. Like, I'm talking metal head dudes with graffiti, like scene, those dudes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Duster, those, those are white boys. They're like, hey, hey you know, they, they, they're doing smoking dust. You mean? That's where, even, even like Blaze and those guys, uh, yeah. Blaze, the, 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 dude, he was like tripping on acid watching Les Up with a black guy. Hey, dude, you know, like, they're like weird. You know, they're, like, they're dudes like that. So. Mm-hmm. so it's just funny when people are like, yo, hip, when I meet people in hip hop, yo, son, I'm like, yo, bro. Say, like, I hate meeting people in hip hop, actually. But doing. When I do hip hop shit and, 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 and the real hip hop heads, like the real hip hop heads, you know, the hardcore guy, if you're into hardcore, you, 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 you're, you're, to me, you're cooler no, no matter what because you're into a different culture. You know, you, you respect everything, hardcore kids. Mm-hmm. But you have dudes that use hip hop with your son, it's all that. You mean like, oh, like people at work, management and stuff, like they're like, yo, that, my, yo, why are you speaking to me like that? You're from fucking, 
you're a rich kid. Shut the fuck up. That's not mm. the shit right now. You're like, it's weird, man. It's, it's like people want to be something else. And you know what? I respect you if you are what you are and you're proud of what you are. Mm. You know, some dudes. That's what I say. So be, dudes, be what you are, man. You know, be happy. You know, you know people say I'm so and so. I'm like, yo, good for him. You know, mm -hmm. you know, like it's like be happy what you are. You represent your crew. You know, do the right thing, bro. It's it's easy. You know, you know what not to do in life, guys. Mm -hmm. And people, you know, people, you learn from other people's mistakes. You know what I mean? Like I tell people all the time, like nowadays, it's it's just way different, bro. You know, just the, the internet, that's fucking crazy shit. You guys have a lot of shit that I don't never dealt with. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you know, my thing is like, be proud where you are. Yo, know, if, if, if you no know, people are like, I, I always see people like there's a lot of, like, uh, you know, punk rock is for all the misfits where you didn't belong here, there, there. You find, you find, punk rock as your family. Mm -hmm. No, a lot of people don't have that, bro. He means it's, a lot of people can't be like, like dudes are all, especially guys in Queens and Brooklyn. Imagine you're, you're young, you can't, I'm gay. And you're, you're all your fucking O'Briens, you're you fucking faggot. You're like, oh my God. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, nowadays you can be, well, you be happy. You know what I mean? Like, like if, if, if I was a, you know, listen, if I was a gay guy in fucking graffiti, I'd be fucking niggas up with, be like, oh, like, yeah, what's up, yo? I'd be like, homo thugging out. I'd be like, oh, all like nice and shit. What's up, nigga? You know what I mean? Like, It'd be hot, niggas be like, right there. and people, and, and, and I'll be fucking up the, the, the hardest graffiti niggas. Be like, What's up now, nigga? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it'd be I'd be like, world star, you know, shit like that. You know, so mm -hmm. Be proud of what you are, bro. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, tw I'm gonna be 49, my girlfriend's 27. My girlfriend's the hottest bitch in the world. Mm -hmm. I love you, Storm. But I'm saying, but like an old nigga like me, look at me, bro. I got, I got like 20 teeth left. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? What the fuck, bro? You know, but I, I'm still going strong. You know, it's, it's, just keep going. Until you can't do it anymore, man. You mm -hmm. know, because once you get married and have kids, your life is fucking over. Yeah. I hope you know that, guys. So, you know, I love her. But don't do it. Make sure that you... Don't everything. Do don't do it. Make sure... No matter... Make sure you get good benefits. Make sure that you're fucking... Your last... Try to go to, like, 32. You know what I mean? Then get married and have kids. Before that, it, you know, it's over. Your life's over. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, it's over. So, but like, you and plus you don't want to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, oh, I'm like my kidneys diapers, but I gotta go see the uh, Gorilla Biscuits reunion. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, yeah. Uh, how happy? How happy would you say you are now with your life and your whole setup that you got? You doing the podcast? You do music? I, I just got. A, I just got a cameo. Okay. For celebrities, like, like that's fucking kids are fucking crazy. So I, they, I got they, they they call me up to do a cameo. And you, the only way you get selected is by your celebrity. So fucking, I have a cameo. I'm a celebrity next to Dolph Lundgren, but I only have a bank account. That's how ghetto I am. Mm -hmm. So it's like, just do it. I'm doing good. You know what I mean, I got my own coffee company. I got fucking a podcast. Yeah, you do. You got a lot of stuff going Diablo's on. Diablo's Den podcast. Go out look at Diablo's Den podcast dot com. Hundred percent. I'll put it in the link. Please do. I wanted to ask you, what's up with the the there voyage you thing you do? The the uh, Danny Diablo's like fantastic voyage, and you go all around in the van. No, no, listen, this is, oh, see, this is crazy. He was saying that. Okay. So ever since COVID shit, I yeah. haven't talked to my boy Med from Tough City. Yeah. He disappeared. He might be locked up. Was Med? I hope you're all right. But I'm saying, but he's the one doing everything. So it stopped. Mm -hmm. So I I did all this fucking uh, since last year the the Black and Blue Bowl. I've been doing all this cutting up after work and stuff like that, and. They made a trailer, but I can't get it because it was just the COVID thing. Well, tell tell the people what the what the what the voice. Danny thing is. Diablo's fantastic voice. Me and Scam going okay. all over the <laughs> all over the United States in a van. You know, what I mean? we, 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 we're just like if you're if you're like a, a low bike a low rider biker guy at the shop or yep. uh, or a skate shop or uh, the best uh, taco truck. We go in there right. for people um, who are independent and alternative lifestyles. Right. Okay. So the guy, the guy owns a graffiti store. We go there. This is the best right. graffiti store in fucking uh, in Cleveland. You know what I mean? Something like that. We go. So it'd be cool. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, and Scam is out of his fucking mind. So it's great. Scam is one of the best, best people in the world. I love you, Scam Dust. Scam Dust is amazing. So you know, but I don't. I, once once the world gets back to normal, I don't know what, 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 that what kind is, of what it. kind of experiences you had on those adventures. Man. Oh God, this this, this, tour, this touring alone. See, I never wanted cameras with me on tour. It's just shit. Just, you don't understand, you guys. It's, you think it's like it's like Vietnam. It's like a fucking. It's like it's like war with, with Scarhead. I mean, you don't know what could happen. You know, it, it was it used to be fun, but now it's like I go out 
I do these tours now, but everything has to be perfect. I mean, I can't be lying on a, on a sleeping on a pool table. Yeah, you know, like, you know, yeah. So I go on tour now. I, I bring my lady with me, and it, I'm in a hotel. It's, it's everything's like a professional, and it's, I, I, and thank God, I feel like I think I put a lot of work into my my career over the years. So yeah, I, yeah. I deserve that shit. You know, yeah, so. to be legit. Yeah. yeah, you know, that's amazing, bro. Yo, I got um. You got the black and blue thing, and yeah. then you you sh- you put that benefit on for the t- kids tumors foundation. The children's uh, the tumor foundation. That's from John Joseph. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you got put on from that because of him. Yeah, he's the one to help me out. Yeah, but I did like the, the last four years. I do Diablo Fest, then I put some of the proceeds towards that. So. Okay. So. And then what? You just you just have a booth out. No, I, the money that come come out, I bring I take a percentage of that money, but like two thousand dollars, I go there and just give it to them. Okay. It's crazy. Last time I went there, they called security on me. I, I had my colors on. I, I, and they, they were all scared. I was like, no, I had money for you guys. And John, John was laughing. He was like, they called me, called my phone. I was like, you know, the he he Scott laughing. They were bugging. They thought I was there, like, they like trying to shake them. I was like, no, I got something for you. <laughs> it's, it's funny. Oh, well, my girl was crying laughing. It was funny. Well, wait, you give it to a hospital or? No, it's, it's the Children's Tumor Foundation by, uh, by Wall Street. So they have an office, beautiful. You walk in there and there's like all these people just... <laughs> Like, it's weird. All these ladies, like, hey, then they, they give me a note. I had to, actually, don't help me out because once you do it, they give me a note. Like, you work with it. I had, to, I had to give one to my lawyer to show that uh, I'm a, not an animal. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you, were saying, <laughs> you were saying that, like, all the money in the world, it couldn't make you feel that way, how you feel when you give to this yeah, foundation. Yeah, it, it, because it's like, uh, you know how people look at us. You know, even, just even like we go to shows, yeah, yeah. leave a show, you see some normal people. They, it's. it's it's and you can't, I can't get mad at people because people are like all the time like what the fuck is you looking at I'm like nigga look at me you know if I was a cop I pull myself over too mm-hmm. I, that, that, look you know, what do you smell what the fuck like, you know, my boys like what the fuck is you looking at I'm like nigga look at you you got tattoos on your face you're fucking you know, you're, 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 you're Puerto Rican you're green eyes nigga you know, you know what I mean like people look, people gonna look at you and they, it, 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 I hate I love when people get mad about that I'm like yo just stop it bro we're like I'm a criminal I, no matter what I say right now. I will always be a criminal. Mm-hmm. It's, just, it's fucked up, but it's always in my blood. Even when I, I go to Walgreens, I steal the fucking the, 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 the Rick Ross fucking beard oil all the time. Like, oh shit. <laughs> I don't know why I do it, but I do it. You know? And you still write. And you st- <laughs> <laughs> it just happens. It happens. My girl's like, oh, you stole the third one this week. And you still write in graph? <sighs> God help me. <laughs> But I always write like graph. Yeah, you know what? I just, uh, I just got, I got locked up uh, <laughs> last year, and they fucking motherfuckers put me through the system. It was, it was fucked up, man. They how they did it too. You got locked right in graph. No, oh, listen, they, they went to my mom's house, so someone ratted me out. So, but my mom's, I haven't been in my mom's house since. You know what I mean? Like, so the thing was, I had to go. I had to get a lawyer. So, so, what they had on me they had they had four, 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 four felonies. I was like, are you fucking serious? Yo, listen, I had to give myself up to, 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 uh, right by um, Williamsburg, the 90 precinct over there. And when I went after, after work, and, and it's so embarrassing because they locked me up and, had to buy, and, and, and I was like, yo, because they, they, check this out. I got a lot of friends who are cops. I got a lot of, I got my, one, my, I got friends who a retired vandal squad that grew up with from Jack Sides. You understand? The, 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 the ex-captain, the ex, the, the, two guys from Battle Squad, a, a homicide cop, two, four cops called, it, called in for me, like, yo, squash it. You know, just like, I, they're like, no, Danny has to come. I was like, are you, oh, so I went there, my lawyer's from Jackson Heights. My, my, my lawyer is from Jackson Heights, and his brother's a, a, a TMR guy. <laughs> so it's, 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 it's crazy, it's crazy stuff. He That's was crazy. like, I got you, Danny, don't worry. My, they, my, I got him for my boy who was a cop, from mm-hmm. old Battle Squad, my boy Eddie. So when I went in there, I was like, is this about graffiti? And they're like, yes. I said, put me through the system. And I was like, I was like, thank God. I thought you had something else. I was like, oh, oh. I'm a leg. I think they're like, all right, let's go. They were so mad at me. Because I was like, because I was like, they're like, yo, Danny, I give you the one guy was like, one guy was cool. He's like, I give you you're the most famous person that we got. And I was like, you guys are losers. <laughs> but you know, they were not put about playing around, but they were cool. They could have been dicks. They were cool. But they, they should never put me into it. It cost me, it cost me 2500 My lawyer, yeah. the, the, my lawyer, it was, I had another lawyer that was out, it was 10 G's to charge me. I was like, yo, my boy was like, 2000 no matter what. 
we go crowd. We don't go Charlie. So I'm your boy. We're from the neighborhood. Got you. And I was like, they caught you in the actor. No, no, that's what I'm saying. Yo, it, it got listen. It got thrown out. It got. Th- I had to pay a disorderly conduct. I was like, I was like, nigga, how is this story kind of? It wasn't even there. My, my lawyer's like, shut the fuck up. He's like, so it costs, it, it costs two, 275 a ticket, this only ticket, 150 for a court cost. I was, yeah, so 2500 cost me. But imagine if I was a normal a, a guy who just, like, had no one. You know, I get locked up. I got, I, I got, I got lawyer money. What I do, who I am, and the people I'm with, it doesn't come out of my pocket. It comes, we we pay money. We have dues. We have an organization. Well, not an organization, but a brotherhood, and and, <laughs> and and we got to retain a lawyer. So it's it's to me. I'm like we could do this all day. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But I'd rather get charged for something that's real. But when they say it was graffiti, I was like, thank you, God. <laughs> I was like, oh shit. <laughs> I was like, woo! I was like, great. They were, they were, they, one guy started laughing. We like, then when I got locked up, they put me in the tight, the tight the guy at the desk. He was like, he's there. And I was like, oh, fuck. They was like, like Tommy, dude, what's up? He goes, good luck, brother. I'd say, what's up? And they're like, oh, you know everyone. They were mad, kind of. Mm-hmm. But it was, a, it was just like, you know, it's, it, it was funny because all the other cops looked at them like they were assholes with the graffiti cops. Mm-hmm. And I was like, these poor guys must get. Well, imagine those guys when they say, oh, graffiti, yeah. yeah. You know? But it was cool. Yeah, you know, listen, you're a, you're a cop, you're a cop, man. You're doing your job. He's doing his job, you know what I mean? But he shouldn't have came me over graffiti, bro. You know what I mean? Like, if it was the other things I thought it was, I would be like, all right, I got me. How long did they have you? Just, uh, 48 hours, you motherfuckers. You know, they... they, they they made me go to Brooklyn. And they took you to bookings. Took, yeah. No, look, but they took me to Queen's house. Yeah. So imagine when we're in Brooklyn, I can wait 24 hours. They're like, oh, we're going we're to drive you to Queen's house now. Yeah. I'm like, why don't you just go to Brooklyn? Yeah. I, I understand. Why don't you t- tell me meet you at Queen's house? And I would just put me at Queen's yeah. house. Or down on the station right down. My, you know what I mean? And it, it, it was just weird. And then, 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 then getting locked up in the, in the felony thing, right? Yeah. And then when Mr. Medias, I met two guys from high school. I'm like, fuck it, I'm in the felony. And they're, like, oh, they're like, yo, this nigga, they're like, they think I probably stabbed someone up. Like, hey, what are you doing? They're like, this guy hasn't changed. Like, what happened to you? Like, my car, my tags. <laughs> That's mad. That's a- yo, I'm like, oh. You yeah. put in your work on uh, like Canvas now and shit, right? Yeah. Where yeah. can people like buy that from you? Because I see oh, you're promoting. Oh, just listen, if you want to get a Canvas from me, it's like, Thank God for canvases, man. Like, whoever thought to, like, because I, I, I was like, fucking, you know, when you're young, fucking art fag. Now I'm an art fag. You know, niggas <laughs> 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 you know, like, fuck that shit. You know, like, like, and I'm like, fuck that. I'm like, oh, wait, I get how much? <laughs> yeah, right. I'm like, I could go to Blake and get fucking six canvases for $20 and charge. 300 each? Yeah. Yo, that's mad, that's mad funny. In one of your shows, you were like, I'll sell in a second. I'll be driving a Lexus tomorrow. Yo, yeah. it, 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 you know, people get all crazy about people selling out. Then you got to do, I'll tell you right now. Uh, it's like when people like like go against the system. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm a hardcore kid. I'm not a punk rock kid. You know, punk rock kids, I used to beat up. You mean, you'd be like, oh, dude, if it's between him and 40, he's fuck up. You know? <laughs> Yeah, he's like, yeah, stupid like that. Don't try it. I'm a Neo sticker. I'm like, fuck that guy. I'm a hardcore kid. So it's like, ah, it's graffiti. Like, I, I'm lucky that that my reputation really helped me. Out. Like, I, my mother still looks at me like, how did this even happen? I just get beaten for this writing graffiti. Like, yo, horrible stuff. And now I'm like, hey, graffiti panels. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I look at the older graffiti guys, I'm like, oh man, I'm gonna be like that. I'm be like fucking right here talking about, yeah, I, I was king in uh, 19. <laughs> <laughs> Hold my back, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all my niggas like, cover your face. I'm like, if they want you, they're gonna get you. I tell everyone, they're like, no, they can't. I tell you, you got fa- Facebook, Facebook recognition. You go like this, need me, you can find a satellite on any way you want. When what, so aluminum foil on my head? What the fuck you want me to do? I'm who I am, they know who it's me. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's actually mad. Yo, most of the writers we've had on here, they don't. They just show their yeah, face. I just thought yeah, about yeah. that. Almost yeah. everyone we've had oh, yeah, on has shown their much. face. Yeah, they yeah, didn't it's, care. It, 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 it's my. I don't give a fuck. It's like I'm who I am. Like, like, what am I doing? I'm not fucking kill- MQ. <laughs> MQ is, a, is my brother, and one of the real motherfuckers in the world. Like, MQ is a career criminal, but he's he just he 
He never saw. He could be like Banksy. He could be like Risky, my boy, Risky, my, my brother Risky, West Coast artist. Shout out to Risky. He could be like that, make money like that, but he's straight for the culture. He's straight Queens, mm -hmm. you know, Corona. He don't give a fuck. You know, he, and the only way I, he would make money if I managed him and I would beat him and hold him, you know, cattle pride, like, do it. Yeah. <laughs> and do it like the camps here. But you yeah. won't do shit. Mm -hmm. I would have to keep that nigga in a hotel. I wouldn't even see my hotel, but he'll destroy the hotel. I would, I would rent someone's garage and give him a 500 and chain him in there and give him cocaine and let him just do And I'll be like, yo, I'll be a millionaire. That's what I'll do. Dude. I'll do MQ. How much are MQ? $500 piece. Let's go. He, he could really sell his He could really sell he could, his he's stuff. He's one of the, I'm just, It's I'm, crazy I'm, that it's, yo, that's honestly crazy he doesn't. Because yeah. he could really sell. But, he, but he's just, you know, I'm telling you guys, you, you've seen, uh, he's in his own world. Mm -hmm. As time goes on. But he's in his own world. But he's smart. He's yeah. he's a street kid. A lot of people don't know about that. And must and Q been on on his, on his own since he's fourteen years old. Mm. You know what I mean? So I did me and him. We were best friends. We lived together. We're brothers. We've been through shit. You know, like and I got his back no matter what. That's my brother. It's, it's not like oh, where's MQ? That's my brother. So like if someone walked and said, "Yo, MQ's a bitch," I, I would stab the guy in three times. You know, there'd be a fight right here. Be right. You know Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's fuck. I'm just saying that's how that's yeah, how yeah, life yeah. is. Uh, yeah, I got you. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not like I'll be like yo. I'd never look for a fight in my life. I, I'll be like I'd rather hang out, drink a double gold with Mountain Dew. Be like, hey, what's up, guys? You know, like you know, I, 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 you learn to love life as you get older. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And you, you understand when you guys get older, it's yeah. like like uh, like. I'm just happy I'm fucking I'm gonna be 49 years old. People know who the fuck I am. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you, and, you seem really happy. You know what it does? It, it, life is crazy because once you get older, once you're 23? 24. 24. Yeah. So when you're 24, once you hit like the 30s and stuff like that, this life just changes. And then you understand like, whoa. like. Uh, so, you know, when, when you get into hardcore, you hate your parents. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, they're not hate, oh, hate them, but like, but you don't understand me, shut the door. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're like, but but once, <laughs> once you get older, you're like, Oh, my poor parents. I'll be like, what the fuck did I do to my mom? Like, I look at my mom's face and I'm like, yo, mom, I'm sorry. I'm like, here's money. Just take it. She's like, why for? Just, just take it. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> just take the money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's like, Danny, why? <laughs> she doesn't stand, you know? So, so. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, where can, you know, go get it. No, I was saying how, like, we've had a lot of guests, like, that can relate to that, you know, like they grew up like in a bad predicament, like they gone through a lot of shit. Yo, a lot of kids got. A lot, listen, I my parents were together. Yeah, they weren't divorced. They, you know, I came from a good. Yeah. I come from a good family. Mm -hmm. My father was a cop. My mother's a housewife. You mean? Mm -hmm. I, you know, it's like I come from a mixed family, different cultures. Mm -hmm. So I in Jackson Heights, you learn from different cultures, the most mm -hmm. diverse neighborhood in the world. Jackson Heights. That's actually true. Yeah. yeah so you understand 100%. growing up, somebody, you know, but someone's Bangladesh, someone's Guyanese, someone's fucking for a, for a Pakistani, you, you know, someone you know, from everywhere, mm -hmm. Vietnam, Bolivia, you know, you know different cultures. Mm -hmm. Other people, of course, in the United States, it's like, duh, you're know, retarded. Mm -hmm. You know, you see people, they're like, they're like it's just funny, like, you go anywhere, but you're on the West Coast, they get more Mexican there, and they're like, no, oh, they're like, they're, Peruvian, how he's Mexican? How you look at him? Things, I mean, it's so weird. They don't know. Right? Yeah, people close-minded. You know? Yeah, but uh -huh. something they ha have in common is like, as they get older in life, they understand what you just said. Like, yeah. they appreciate it more. They look back. They go to their parents to say sorry if they're fortunate enough to yeah, even have, have their to, parents. Have you, know? So, like, you know why? Because yeah. like, I wish. I want to tell you a story right now. My father died in my arms on my mother's birthday. You know, and I, I want to tell you the story and make you guys laugh. I always make people laugh. I was on tour. <laughs> I was on tour with Vanilla Ice, so something. But so my, we were all fucked up. Me last, and my thirty one forty. My father was like, blah, blah, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "Who the fuck is that?" We're all coked up. And all of a sudden, my father's like, "Assholes, your mom's birthday." I'm like, fuck! And my dog comes running up to my my father. Rah, 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 rah. He's like, "Why is this? Why is he acting like an asshole?" My, my dogs always loved my father. He's just, he knew there's something wrong with my father. Like dog wow. animals, no. Wow. He's like, he's like, why is he doing that? I was like, I don't know. What the fuck? <laughs> you know? So, I, I stop at a like a Walgreens or something, drop off the one hour photo. It's back in the day, one hour photo mm -hmm. for the one ten. Yeah. Thirty five. Put it in there. But I look at my phone. He goes like this. I go, what the fuck's wrong with you? He's beard. I was like, you're a shame. You look horrible. He's like, yeah, really, really. He's like, just go, just go with your mom. Say happy birthday. Blah blah. You take the J train home. I was like, what? He's like, you know, shit like that. He'll drive me somewhere. Just go, you know, you take the train home. I'm like, yo, you're taking me out of my house. You know, he's like, bring me back. So we, so we go to the house. I'm like, Ma, happy birthday. Go in. 
boom, he falls on the floor right there and dies. And my mom, ah, birthday running around, I give mouth to mouth. I'm getting, I'm getting this nigga mouth to mouth, and his fucking dentures come out of my face. And I'm like, what the fuck are you laughing? I was like, what the fuck? It's like a movie. And, and, and my father, I, I was thinking to myself, like, I saw my father, the hardest man in the world, the life come out of his eyes, like, like holding his last breath, and he was scared. He was never scared. So I was like, you know, my father was scared. He, he was scared. And he was like, and I was like, I was like, first of all, it's fucked up because I'm the only, the, imagine me over you, giving me mouth to mouth. That's the last thing he saw of me. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> that's, that's the first thing. Second thing, my mother was fucking yelling. He must be like, bitch, shut the fuck up. I'm dying. You know what I mean? Like, this is mine. And the, the last thing is, thank God. Imagine I was on tour with Vanilla Ice and my father died. I would have missed it. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm trying to say. So we got to make jokes about it. Yeah, yeah. But, yo, but like, it happens just like that. So if you have a fight with your father over some stupid shit, what you guys are going to have, no matter what in life, understand he has a lot of problems he's dealing with your mother and your family. So, but at first, I used to hate my mother, my father. I'd be like, fuck you, man. Then my father died, and my mother, oh, my. I'm like, no wonder this nigga fucking hated you. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? No wonder he's like, shut up, yo. He, the nigga, all he wants to do is watch the Knicks, and you piss bother him. Let him watch the Knicks. You know, that's, a, that's all. So, I love you, mom. You're a great mother, a great wife. But, you know, my poor father really fucking, he provided for my family, and my poor mother, who was going strong, like, that, that was his, her life. You know what I mean, when he was gone, I was like, oh my God. It's like so crazy to see that part of a life. Like, she didn't know what to do. She still hasn't even talked to another man ever since. That's how my that's how my grandma was too. Crazy, right? Like, yeah. Well, the old old school people used to be like that, like yeah, yeah. Like, like, like Once they die, it's like, over. Yeah. Spanish, like, like, they still wear black. And they get mm-hmm. the my mom too, man. She yeah. lost both her husbands, and she still hasn't been with anybody. See, it's, it's weird, man. Yeah, it's it like, crazy. Hey, you know why? Because you're like, I look at my girl. And I'm like, what? This, well, yo, you only like a few years left of me, B. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, ah. <laughs> I look at her I'm like, yo, she's so beautiful and young, and she's like, like she's like perfect because I'm so fucking like a little still a kid you know what I mean mm-hmm. like so she's like stop I'm like she's dead. sometimes I'm on the computer I'm like I'm like a computer I go I'm on the phone I'm like I want to post it she says, don't post it I'm like <laughs> why she says don't post it I mean all of a sudden I get in trouble she says, I told you she was like ah. she says, she's, uh, thank God for her bro Yo, thank you so much for coming, bro. Thank you. I'm sorry bro. for talking so no. much. Nah, it's perfect. Uh, it was perfect. Uh, it was perfect uh, I can you shout out to uh, the, 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 the do your thing, bro. I'd like to give a shout out to the, all, all my DMS brothers: uh, Doyle, rest in peace; uh, Trix, rest in peace; Josh Lagoon, rest in peace; uh, fuck, Norm, rest in peace. You know, the, the, the Norm was a good guy. Normal rise. That was like yeah, was I one, loved one, one, his graph, bro. My 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 boy. Um, I just shout out to uh, Death Star. Inferno is my new band. Okay, it's it's a shit. It's like Machine Head meets Soulfly. Okay, so that's my that's my, that's gonna be my uh, house in Arizona for all the metalheads. That's what I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm going metal, guys. But uh, the album's Den podcast. Jay Reason, I love you. Um, cameo, go if you want me to cameo. Cameo is when you call me up or you call the the app Cameo, and I could talk mad shit and get paid for it. That's it. That, I might as well get paid for it. That's what else? Yeah. Um, Force Five Records. Danny Diablo merch, uh, Danny Diablo merch dot com, uh, New York City hardcore streetwear, and I got the new. I can pick you up right now. New York hardcore street uh, streetwear hats you can get at Generation Records. Also, you can get them at uh, Culture New York too, right? Cult- yeah, yeah, yeah Culture. Yeah. Just looking for the Asian cats. They'll, they'll help you out. All right, peace, bro. It was a pleasure, man. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you, man. Thank you. Peace. Thank you so much. Yeah, guys, thank you so much. Bro.